What's going on everyone? CDR Handicapping here. First day on the new channel and first video on the new channel. I figure why not make it a tutorial video for all you newbies out there. Uh, maybe even some of the uh, the old rail birds who've been at this for a while might might look at this and it might help change their strategy a little bit. Maybe give you something to look at uh, that you haven't thought of before. It might help your handicapping. Um, but being around, I've been around this for a while. So I, I mean I know how it is. It's super confusing. If you try to to tell someone new about this, like I'll talk to friends who have no clue about this, or uh, or even my like fiance or someone, it's like explaining rocket science to them. Uh, they don't understand it. It'd be it's just it's tough. When you're new to this, it is so so tough to understand what it means, and uh, especially when you're looking at something like this, this racing form. There's just so many numbers and and so much information on this one sheet of paper, and it it makes your head spin a little bit. So. Unlike sports wagering, where, you know, with the pandemic and all that, that kind of is gone at the moment. So a lot of people are looking into this, and it's something new. And they're used to that 50-50 shot. Like, hey, you know, either my team covers or doesn't cover, if you're betting the spread or if you're betting the over-under. But with horse racing, it's, you know, if you look at just simple math, like this race we're about to look at has eight horses. So just mathematically, you only have a one in eight chance of winning. Um, there are seven other runners other than the one horse you pick. So there are more opportunities to lose. It's not just that 50-50 that shot. Um, the kind of interesting thing about it, though, is that with horse racing, and I don't know if a lot of y'all know this, uh, you, you guys that are new to it might not, you're not betting against the house. It's not like how Vegas makes the lines and does all that where they're, oh, well, we'll make... You know, these odds here that you see on paper, this 5-1, to one, yeah, the, the track, there's an odds maker that makes those lines. But the horse doesn't go off at what the morning line is. That's just like a suggestion almost, what he thinks that horse's value is. But the actual value on the tote board is is determined by other gamblers. So others, other people's money that's out there is determining the price of the horse that you are betting on. So... What you kind of want to do is you want to think outside the box and maybe say, well, what, you know, I, I'm not one to really pick favorites. The race I'm going to show you, you know, the favorites, the one that that I kind of do the tutorial with, but it just makes the race set up so perfect. It's going to explain my tutorial perfect. So I, I wanted to do this race. But what you want to do is you want to take this strategy and you want to try and find horses at a good price that fit exactly what we're talking about. You know, where the race, the conditions fit them, where the class fits them, where, you know, the the race setup, how the race is going to be run, if that fits them. Whether it's a super fast race early on and it's going to favor closers or it's a really slow race up front and, and uh, speed horses are going to be favored. So once you can kind of get this down and predict how a race is going to be run, it's going to help you in the long run. Uh, because you're going to essentially have a, a miniature crystal ball in front of you that you can kind of see, you know, based off of past events, how something might happen in the future. So you look through, first thing I'm going to look for is have any of these horses won a race on the turf? Because this is the grade two Monrovia, five and a half furlongs on the turf at Santa Anita Park. They ran this yesterday on Memorial Day. So this column right here is where I'm first looking. If it's a stakes race and it's on the grass, that's the first place I go has this horse won on the turf and the one has the two has the three has the four has and you're gonna keep going down the five has and then you find your first one boom the six hasn't won hasn't even started a race on the turf right so this is new to her now it's a graded stakes race if this was like a claiming race or, or something, I would give a you know give an excuse, say, hey, maybe I'll take a look at this horse that did run a bullet work, but I'll um I'll throw it out pretty easy. Uh, never won on the turf, never tried on the turf. They paid six hundred fifty thousand for her as a two year old, so I mean this horse, she was she was meant to be something big. She just hasn't really shown it yet. Um, you can throw her out pretty easy though. We got our first one off the ticket. So now we've taken a, a one in eight chance and dropped to a one in seven chance already. So we already improved our odds. Seven and the eight both have wins on turf. So we'll go back to the uh, top of the page. Next thing I want to look for is speed and class. I want a horse that has the class to run well against these ones. 
but also has the speed to be up near the pace because it's a sprint race. Santa Anita, it's real dry. It's out in, out in California, out in Arcadia. Real dry, real hard ground. So it's going to be almost like running on pavement for these horses. So front end is going to have a little bit of an advantage, right? Because it's going to be easier on their legs. So it's going to favor speed. One show speed. However, this is a grade two race, and she's only been racing against state bred stake competition. Nothing too extravagant. Um, for that reason, just based off the class, I know there's better value out there. She is the lone speed. Um, she's definitely the speedball of the race, but I'm not going to, you know, settle on that. She's going to be leg weary in the stretch. I think this form just shows that she's, she doesn't really have the class. A little bit outclassed in this group, so she's one I can easily throw out and stay away from. Now, the two is interesting because two definitely has the class. No doubt about it. Finishes third in grade two, finishes third in grade three, and wins a grade three. Has a win at the distance, going five and a half furlongs, but this horse likes to close. And we just said that we don't like closers too much, especially at Santa Anita when it's... Now, if this was like a muddy track, muddy or like a soft going on the turf, I would say maybe. But this horse is coming off a long layoff. She hasn't run since October 11th. So... I mean, she's on a long layoff. Nothing outstanding. Your workouts are going to be right down here. Those are the last times this horse was clocked on the track. And the dates are next to it. But, I mean, she's been doing okay workouts, but nothing extreme. Um, I can look elsewhere. Uh, she got Joel Rosario on for Neil Drysdale. But um, you could certainly look elsewhere and feel comfortable with, uh, with throwing this one off the ticket. I think she'll be running late, um, which you'll see in the replay. She, she does come flying late, but... Just lacking a little bit of race fitness. She'll probably be better next time out. Um, so that was why I could easily throw that one off. The three, totally outclassed and closes and coming off a long layoff. No extreme, no great workouts. That's an easy one to throw off. The four was interesting because the four is a little bit outclassed but does show that speed and did run against grade three stakes competition back in March. But she just gave up so, so bad at the end. I mean, she goes, you know, breaks first. And she runs a 22 and eight, or 22 and uh, about 22 and 10 out, out in the first quarter. So I mean, not blistering, nothing crazy, but she still didn't have enough juice after that. So I, I would say, hey, you know, no big deal. We can probably throw her off. She might hit the ticket, but she's nothing. I, I don't think that race or even anything in the past tells me this horse is a winner in this group. Because I would still, even though I don't like the two off the layoff, the two is a better horse than this four right now, just off of, with the layoff included. So, if I don't like the two, I'm definitely not going to like the four. The five, same deal. Totally overclassed. There is no way she she's even going to be competitive against this field because she hasn't run against any, anyone like it. And she's a competitive horse. She's carded, you know, 146000 in her career, but... Nothing extravagant. Coming off a slight two-month layoff, I can look elsewhere and feel comfortable. So now we got it down to two horses. And when we look at the two, I mean, you look at the seven and you say, hey, the sevens won a grade two, or won a grade three, finished second in a grade two, won a grade one, and won a grade three. And she's run twice this year and looked really good her first two times in the States. Now, they stretched her out to a mile in the uh, Buena Vista grade two, and she ran really good. She was the front end speed, but I think a mile might be just a little too long for this horse. So I like that Richard Mandela dropped her back. When I saw this horse stick out in the program, I said, man, Mandela's dropping her back in at five and a half furlongs after stretching her to a mile. They had just won at five and a half. And when you got a, tra a trainer like Richard Mandela, he knows, you know, that's this horse's distance. This is my best chance to win. I'm going to go ahead and, and sign her up for this race. Let's get her entered. And, I mean, he did a hell of a job entering her in this spot because he gets her ready. April 23rd, she runs a, a great bullet workout going 112 and 2 over six furlongs. Really good maintenance works after that leading up to this race. So the horse was fit. She was ready to go. Um, and she has that early speed that we like to look for. She can stalk this pace. There's no extreme pace that she's going to have to really chase. She can kind of run her own race. So, she has all the keys we're looking for. We're definitely liking the seven. We look at the eight, and first thing that jumps out, yeah, this horse won a grade three, but she's a closer. She's slightly outclassed. 
but she struggled to find pace. I mean, she she really, really struggled. That was a weak grade three that she won. And she really struggled to find pace early against the uh, the one horse, Steal the Diamonds, her last two starts. So what that's telling me is that now you got a horse on the outside post who is struggling to find pace. She might be competitive here, but the way I see it is that she ends up being three wide in the first turn. Um, doesn't really have much probably left heading into the stretch due to the fact that she's low out class. So it's not going to be her best spot for her. Um, not saying anything bad, like, hey, you can totally throw this horse out. Horse has zero chance, but... Uh, when you look at it, the seven's kind of a clear-cut, easy single in this situation. The eight just doesn't show you enough to even really consider it for a win. It's more of an underneath play. Um, so you've taken an eight-horse field and narrowed it down to just one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how that actually works. So this is going to be the replay from Santa Anita. I wanted to show you guys this because this is that race... They're loading in the gate, grade two Monrovia stakes, and you're going to see how this pans out exactly like we saw it on the form. They leave the gate, and I'm going to pause it right here. The one, who we said was the speedball, goes right out to the front. Early pace, no problem. Boom, gone, see you later. Two, who we said was going to be the late closer, drops to dead last, right out of the gate. Our seven's hustling up there, just stalking the pace. And the eight is struggling to find pace. Sitting back, looks like she'll end up coming up like next to last as they leave the, the shoot here. So they're heading out, and the one shoots out. Now, the jockey on the one's going to try and take her up a little bit, uh, have her save some speed up. And, I mean, he does an okay job kind of railing her back, but they go pretty fast in the opening quarter. Uh, 21 and 4 through the opening quarter. The 7 with Mike Smith. I mean, he's just sitting and waiting. He's so patient on this horse. And he knows he got enough class to get by this one in the stretch. So he's not panicking at all. And you can see the 6 is pretty much all in. Nothing left from the 6. And 2 still winding up. So the 7 got plenty of time. And here goes Mike. He's going to go ahead, get this horse to the outside of the 1. And just wear her down in the stretch. Look at these late strides. Big strides at the end. Now the two does come flying late. So this one will be something to watch next time out. I'd definitely take a look at her. Um, she was just lacking a little bit of race fitness coming into this one. So I feel like she was a tiny bit too far off the pace. They went super fast. So that did help her. Next time out she'll definitely be deadly in a spot like this. But uh, the seven was just too much. And I mean based off the form. This race ran exactly like we said it would. Um so basically, that's what I want to teach you guys. I am more, and man, look at that seven. She is just a gorgeous animal. She has such a build on her. That'd be one to look for in the future, too, because she's, uh, she's definitely got something uh, something left for the future. I mean, I think, I think Richard Mandela got something special with her. Jolie Olympica. But, uh, yeah, I mean, guys, this is basically the end of the tutorial. Now, every Wednesday through Sunday, I'm going to post a video and run through that day's cards at the bigger tracks. So you'll have them 10 a.m. before post time even hits, a couple hours before post time you'll have them. So you can kind of check your strategy up with mine. It might help you maybe think of a couple things that you didn't notice the first time through the form, um, but it's a good, useful tool. I'm not saying I'm some kind of expert, like I'm going to have a winner every single time out. I'm not. But just strategy on how I would play that day, how everything's going to work, and use that with your own. Try and see if there's something that you might have missed or something that can kind of help you understand this a little better. Um, but that'll start tomorrow, 10 a.m., every Wednesday through Sunday. I'll have that day's major races uh, and strategy. I'll run through the cards, and at least the key races on each card, and uh, give you guys an idea on what's all going on. Um, but for now, that's the uh, the video here. Thank you so much. Uh, this is CDR Handicapping. Comment. Make sure you subscribe so you get the uh, you know the notifications for each video every day. And uh, let me know if there's anything uh, you guys have questions about, or let me know what works for you. And we'll uh, we'll take it from there. All right. Thanks, guys. Good luck and happy handicapping.